Hi, Dr. Michael DiMattina, Medical Director of Dominion Fertility. Thanks for tuning in today. So I first want to thank the many thousands of patients who have come to Dominion Fertility. I opened Dominion Fertility in 1987. It's our 31st year, I'm proud to say. And uh, we've produced thousands and thousands of babies over that time frame. Uh, but I want to thank the patients who came here and trusted us to take care of the them and their reproductive care, provide the reproductive care. And it's been truly an honor and a pleasure for me and my staff too, uh, an incredible staff. Uh, the doctors, the nurses, the embryologists, the front desk, the billing, these people, uh, they make me look good. And, uh, and our practice look good. And I can't thank them enough for their dedication. It's the most caring group of people. Uh, they love their job and uh, it's great. So what I thought I'd talk about today, there's so many things I like to talk about, but I thought, you know, we, we see a lot of patients here have difficult cases of infertility where uh, they failed treatments elsewhere and then came here and we got them babies. And, you know, yeah, a lot of that skill, no question about it. And, you know, there's an element of luck too with, with some of these because it's biology, it's not calculus as I always say. So I'm going to talk, and there's so many difficult cases. I just randomly selected a few of the more recent cases that I think are really incredible. Um, so I titled the difficult infertility cases successfully treated at Dominion Fertility. So let's go with the first case, and this may be you. Um, so this was a lady who was 43 years of age, and she had what's called poor ovarian reserve. For those of you who don't know what that means, means her egg quantity, not her quality, the quantity was very low. So she didn't have very many eggs. And in fact, uh, this lady was 43 years of age, but still had regular periods. But she went to another clinic, IVF clinic, and they told her uh, in 2016, your FSH is too high, uh, meaning you know, you're nearing menopause, and you need an ova egg donor to get a baby. And she didn't want to hear that. She says, you know, I still have regular periods. So I'd like to try with my own eggs first. I don't disagree, I think that's a great option. It's funny, it's not funny, it's interesting that a lot of patients are told this and a lot of these patients can be successful with their own eggs if you just give them a try. And this is proof of it too. So I said, okay, let's do it. And indeed her anti-malarian hormone, AMH, was equally low, suggesting she had very few eggs. You know, but nothing was ever gained by saying no. So we said, let's try it. So we tried her in 2017 last year. We use a protocol we have found extremely effective for people who have low ovarian reserve um, called the Stop Lupron Protocol. And I told her, this may not work, may not get any eggs at all, or we might get a couple. Of them. And so she produced only two follicles. So only two follicles. Now many IVF centers, in the, in the United States anyways, cancel patients because they only have one or two follicles, or they'll convert them to IUI, artificial insemination, telling them that, hey, you know, you don't have enough follicles, uh, let's just do that and that would be better. And often I find that's just crazy. It makes no sense half the time. Uh, particularly in a lady like this, she only has one or two follicles, you go after and you get the egg. And I'm going to show you what happens here. So next slide please. So this lady, two follicles, and I said, you know, we can go in, we might get none, we might get at most two eggs, and indeed we did. She said, I'm game. Good. So we got two eggs. Interestingly, both of them fertilized, grew to blastocyst embryos. These are very strong embryos. And then we were one of the leaders in the United States on doing pre-implantation genetic screening, PGS. Uh, virtually all our stimulated patients do that now. There's a lot of upside to that, higher pregnancy rates, lower miscarriage rates. And with 99% certainty, you know the baby is normal before you put the embryo in. And so one of the two embryos were normal. We put it into her one blast and she has a viable pregnancy. We expect her to be delivering fairly soon. So this is a lady who was told to use an egg donor who wanted to have her own biological baby. Pretty good stuff, yeah? Um, what do we learn? Well, I think this is it right here. Don't give up. I mean, I've heard this story hundreds and hundreds of times. You need an egg donor. You know, we, nothing we do for you. And boom, we have a baby. It's not about the egg quantity or the embryo quantity. That helps, the more the merrier. You can be in a much better situation if you have a lot of eggs, but it's about the egg or the embryo quality that counts. Well, how do you know about that? And you can find that out to, look, to a large extent by doing what's called PGS, pre-implantation genetic screening. 
because it tests all the chromosomes, and if they're normal, then it tremendously increases the likelihood of implantation and a delivery. And I'll show you here. That here. So this is, this is our data, Dominion Fertility's data from 2016, and you can see here, you know, across age groups, the blue bars, 48% of 35 to 37-year-old people delivered, and this is transferring a single embryo. Dominion Fertility only transfers one embryo. And we get these kind of pregnancy rates, 38 to 40, 60 percent, 41 to 42, one embryo is transferred, 46, and look, look at this, over 42, if the embryo is, is genetically normal, proved by the use of PGS, 60 percent, if we don't do PGS, the live delivery rate drops tremendously. This is just proof, and this is not just my data, you can see this in other centers that do a lot of PGS. PGS is one of these techniques that's been a major breakthrough in reproductive medicine. It's totally safe, and at Dominion Fertility, we have a very good um, um, laboratory we use that has given our patients preferred prices where it only costs $150 per embryo to test. So financially, it's a very, very um, effective, uh, cost-effective thing to do. That's why we advocate PGS so much for our patients. And it doesn't hurt the baby. You, you, there's no risk to the baby. Next slide. So we have patients who have normal ovarian reserve that we have seen, but they don't get pregnant after IVF. Okay. So next one. Now, this is a really interesting lady. This lady came all the way from Saudi Arabia to see me. I was really honored and flattered. Um, she had failed when she was 38 to 40 years of age. This is unbelievable. 13 stimulated IVF cycles. I didn't know anybody had enough strength. I don't know. They, I don't think I could do that. I told her, I said, you're a really cur courageous lady, very brave lady, to go through 13 stimulated IVFs and no pregnancy. And she had very high ovarian reserve, and she walks in Dominion Fertility's office to see me at 41 years of age. She had never been pregnant before in her life. And um, the interesting thing about this lady was, she, even though she failed all these, she produced a lot of eggs. She was a high responder to the drugs. So remember I said, it's not about a numbers game, it's about a quality. Quality game of how many, what's the quality of the embryos. So she, she was always producing 20, 30 eggs, but they never did PGS on the embryos. They were just transferring these embryos wildly back in her, and they were putting a lot of embryos in, and no pregnancy. So I saw that she had strong ovarian reserve, and I said, okay, give me one chance. But I'm going to do it differently. We're going to add the PGS to this. So we went ahead and stimulated her, and sure enough, she's 41 years of age. I got 20 eggs. Uh, we produced eight blastocyst embryos. These are strong embryos. One of the eight was PGS or genetically normal. We transferred, and she delivered a healthy boy. That's a big deal for her and her husband. Um, we knew the gender before we put the embryo in. So it's a great story. So again, this illustrates this case. It's not about the number of eggs. It's the quality of the embryo. Yeah? So poor ovarian reserve. What about somebody who has very low uh, um, egg quantity? And there's another case here. This lady was actually going through menopause. And we, we saw this lady not too terribly long ago. 40 years of age, but she still had regular periods. Yet she was having hot flashes and night sweats.